Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. I am Bearded Dev. This is Sequel for Beginners Part 4. So what are we going to be looking at in this part? We are going to be looking at selecting. See what I did there? Sequel joke. Not very good. Only the columns we want. And also distinct. So on my screen is just some code we've got left over from the last part where we introduced the WHERE clause. If you haven't watched that yet, please do go back and check out that video. What I'm going to do now is open up a new query window. Uh, so if we click on new query. Uh, by the way guys, it's worth mentioning uh, something I get into at work because I literally work with SQL all day is I have literally hundreds of these query windows open at a time and that is just not good practice. Uh, it's something I've had to counteract myself and remember to, to close them down because you'll find that um, you start writing queries and then you'll go back to a query you wrote early and you've got to look through hundreds of these to find where they are. Also, if you ever want to save a query, uh, just click on, right click on the uh, on the query and just click save and then put that in the, the location where you wish to save it. Um, so we're going to be looking at just selecting the columns we want. So in part two, we introduced select. Um, so we're going to just write select all from books here. Uh, we can click on this execute here or press X F5 uh, so we're just going to click execute so we've got all our data in here now we don't really care about most of these columns especially when we can have tables with a lot more columns than this uh, into the tens or maybe hundreds uh, although I wouldn't really recommend having a table with hundreds of columns uh, you need to look at a way to cut that down. But anyway, uh, what we don't want to do is return any unnecessary data. Um, again, the purpose of a database is to allow us to manage our data effectively. And we don't want to have to scroll along columns. I mean, if these columns went off the page, we'd have a scroll bar here to scroll along searching for what we wanted. We don't want to have to do that. How do we return only the columns we want? So we're looking at the table here, books, and we've got quite a few columns. We've got seven columns in total, so we've got PID. We don't really want to return that. P title we may want to return, P author, P year, P barcode, P stock, P type. If you haven't watched the previous parts, we're using just a small bookshop database at the moment. Anybody who gets into development, for some reason, you always start off working with a bookshop, so I've just continued that theme here. What we're going to do then, uh, let's think of a hypothetical situation. Uh, we're working in a bookshop. A customer comes up to us. Can you tell me the year a brief history of time was created? By the way, guys, these years are not entirely accurate. Um, I just copied these from... A website I found just to throw some sample data in here so let's say we want to know the year a brief history of time was done so instead of using this wildcard symbol that returns all columns that I've highlighted here what we can actually write within our select statement is the columns that we want to return by the way guys if you want to put your from clause on a separate line there is no harm in that if I execute this query now by clicking F5 it's still going to run exactly the same just remember if you have got it across multiple lines and you've got multiple queries you need to highlight the whole query to actually execute that anyway what we're talking about now is we only want to return a suitable amount of columns we only want to return the data that we want to see so we want to know the year in which a brief history of time was published. So we may want to return the title. We don't have to, but for, for ease of showing this scenario, we'll return the title. 
and this up here guys if we want to return more than one column it's just a comma separated list I'll just show you actually um, let's just write this and what we'll do is we can write out all of these columns one by one so I'll just throw this query together just to show you that that asterisk does in fact represent let's return all the columns we can see at the moment uh, like I have mentioned before with IntelliSense that just simply checks if your query is correct uh, and we can see it's pretty much saying everything you've entered is correct and that's because I've only written the select at this stage so it doesn't actually know which table I'm going to get them from as soon as I throw in from books within a few seconds yeah there that's gone so it's recognized that as a query so what I'll do I'll execute these both um, so I'm just going to click on execute I haven't highlighted an individual query so it's going to get execute both of those uh, we can see we've got 18 rows down in the bottom corner here uh, if we click on just a one table we've got nine rows and if we click on this table we've got nine rows as well anyway just wrote that as an example just to show you what this asterisk actually represents to start off with if you just want to query tables and practice that's fine to use once you get to really using SQL and knowing the columns uh, when you start working with a database it can take a bit of time to get the note get to know the columns off by heart um, so one thing you can do is just run that and say oh well now I can see these column headings here and I can put those in to the ones I want so in this scenario uh, I'll leave that query up there and go to write another query down below so we want we're going to return the title uh, we, we're looking for the year that uh, a brief history of time was published so we don't really care about the author at this stage although fantastic guy uh, barcode now stock don't really care about that and the type we don't really care about that either um, so we'll just run that from books uh, we'll just highlight that so we only run that query click execute uh, now as we can see at the moment we've just got every title and every year but as we did in part three we introduced the where clause um, so what we can write here is where p underscore title equals we're going to open apostrophes because we want to indicate to SQL that this is a character string brief history of time okay so we've wrote our query there we'll just highlight that and we'll click F5 this time uh, and there we can see it. so we've returned our title we don't really need that it wasn't asked for but it might be handy to have and also the year that that was published and just one thing I want to pick on up on here if you was to spell any part of this incorrectly you would not receive an error um, because you are indicating to SQL what you're actually looking for there so sometimes you can come across you'll run a query and you'll think well that data does actually exist but it's returned nothing uh, but just check the spelling make sure that's correct You'll probably be working with uh, much better data than this if you're working with a database that's been um, sort of in, in a production environment. Obviously, this is just a quick sample database to allow me to produce these videos. But uh, if you're working with a database in production, um, you'll be able to write a lot better of, um, queries than this. You probably wouldn't have to write sort of text this long to query. There'd be other maybe columns that you could uh, that you could search by um, but like I say this is just a sample so let's do one more example of just specifying the columns that we want to do um, let's do let's imagine this scenario where we found a barcode on the floor these barcodes are stickers on the back of the books and we don't know which book it belongs to so we've got a barcode and we need to find out the book that that belongs to so all we need to do really is return the title in this scenario from books and then use our where clause to enter the barcode um, 
let's see if I can remember one of the barcodes I actually entered. I think it was pretty straightforward, eight digits. Uh, as you can see there, it's come up with a squiggly line because I have forgot to put the equal symbol. And I've also forgot to indicate the column. So I'll just enter that in there. Ah, so I have remembered. We're going on a bear hunt. Amazing book. Moving on to the second part of this video, what we're going to be looking at is distinct. Now the purpose of distinct in SQL is to return only unique values, only unique uh, data. So let's have a look at our books again. Now we want to find out what types of books we do. So we could write a query that says, I'll tell you what I'll do, I'll just open a new query window. You see how I mentioned earlier I get carried away with query windows and pretty soon we'll probably have a hundred open, but never mind. Uh, guys, one thing to mention that can really slow down your machine though, I have had that happen in the past. You'd have to have quite a lot open, but it can affect performance and it's just a pain. So try not to go down that route. Um, so we're looking at we're looking for we're looking at distinct. So we want to find out all the types of books we have. So we could run a query select p type from books, and we get all our results. But as we can see, we've only got two types: paperback and hardback, and we don't really want to return them that many times. We don't need to know the information that many times. Uh, and imagine this was a table with a thousand rows. We would have a scroll bar over here where the mouse is showing. Um, and to check if there was another type that existed, we'd have to scroll all the way down to the bottom. It's not practical, it's time consuming, and it's not what we want to do. So this is where we're going to introduce distinct. Now distinct will come before your column name. Uh, so if we write a select distinct you can see that words in blue it's a keyword for SQL um, so again what I've mentioned previously any spelling mistakes it will show in black so we can write select distinct p type from books now let's run let's run this whole window so let's just click on execute and we can see the top query that we've run here has returned our nine results, which is everything in the table. We're not using a where clause in this query. And the second results is only returning hardback and paperback. So what that does is it checks all the, all the rows. Uh, and if it's duplicate data, just chucks it away. We don't want that. We don't need it in this scenario. Sometimes we do need to return that, so if we wanted to return, I don't know, uh, a couple of columns, we might want to find out what type of, if we add the title as well, we might want to know, we might want to return the different types, but if we just want to run a query and find out the unique values, that's where distinct comes into play. Now I'm just going to run another example here. So if we select P title from our books table, uh, and we're going to make this distinct. So we're going to want to return only unique book titles. So if we run this query, we know we've got nine rows in this table. We'll run it. And we've got nine. And that's because none of the titles are the same. They're, they're all unique titles. So we don't need the word distinct in our query. If we don't know there's gonna, if there might be distinct data, then it's probably best to add it that we don't need. Um, but if we know it's a column we're querying that can only have unique values, um, so a title of a book, we don't really want that in there twice. There may have been a mistake where somebody's added that book again. Um, so in this scenario, we don't need to use that distinct. 
um, because that can be quite expensive so when you run a query obviously the database engine has got to process that so what it's going to do is when you have distinct it's going to evaluate each row of data to find out if they match another row of data so in this scenario we're not going to tell the difference if we were returning hundreds of columns from hundreds of tables we'd see a massive difference in the performance of the query we can also see down here that uh, we'll get a message saying query executed successfully um, so that's to say our query was successful if we changed it to this and run that we'd say query completed with errors and in our messages box we'd have an error uh, also on the right hand side we have a time uh, so the time it takes to run the queries these queries are very simple they're very small tables so it's literally taking it's it instant it's taking no time at all further on down the line when we look at more complex queries we'll see that that's taking some time and I'm also going to be doing some videos on query optimization uh, which is really important within SQL in the future okay guys that's a wrap for this video uh, so just to recap we've covered returning only the columns we want uh, so we don't have to use the very expensive asterisks anymore and um, we've also looked at distinct please do like the video um, it, obviously if you enjoyed it uh, subscribe to the channel for more content in the future um, I'm hoping to get videos up as quickly as possible we are going to move on to some more advanced work as well uh, I just wanted to start with the series sequel for beginners um, in the next video we're going to be looking at the order by clause and top thanks for watching